So the hottest new morph in the Crested Gecko game is the Sable. Now this gene is absolutely wild. It reminds me a lot about the Lily White. And in this video, we're gonna talk everything you need to know about Sables. <laughs> So Sable is an incomplete dominant mutation that is very, very similar to the Cappuccinos. Now, a lot of people actually think they're an allelic mutation, and we'll talk about that later. But basically, the Sable being an incomplete dominant means that if you pair up one Sable to a normal gecko, about half of the offspring should come out Sable and half of the offspring should come out normal. What the Sable does, we're still trying to figure out, but what we do know is that it kind of subdues the orange and yellow pattern color on the dorsal and on the sides. Usually Sables hatch out with that, you know, like kind of like a burnt looking orange color and as they age, they start to lose that but it does exaggerate the cream and the white like you see on this gecko. There are some examples of sables that actually just blow up in color. They honestly look like lily white, some of them. You know, it's a completely different gene. The cool thing about this is that it's just another thing, another ingredient to add to the mix. The combinations that we've been making with them, the lily sables, down the line of xanthic sables, I think it's gonna help us produce some of the craziest crested geckos in the world. This is a relatively new gene it has been around since about 2017 but now we're going to talk about the history on how this came about so the first recognized sable was actually hatched about 2017 by cindy at gecko haven now cindy acquired a pair of geckos from a really old school breeder in texas called gorgeous gecko this pair was just a nice white spot harlequin and this other female her name was pinch which looked like a cappuccino at that time, we didn't have cappuccinos, we didn't have sables or anything like that. Cindy just thought they were two cool geckos and she bred them together. From that pair, she actually produced two geckos and unfortunately the pair passed. One was Rialto, which is the, the godfather of sable gene, and two was another gecko that unfortunately she sold and she basically lost track of, she never heard from that person she sold again. Rialto was really special because right off the bat, Cindy knew he was different. As he started aging, he started progressing and, and his white spots started to grow and grow and the white on his back started to spread. When he was a baby, he didn't have that much white. He was more of like a Harlequin type, but as he progressed, he completely changed into a different gecko. Now this is common with the sables because of how much they change and how, how drastic that change of the orange and the yellow pattern is. When they hatch out, it usually, it looks like, you know, similar to a normal gecko. And by the time they age, it could brown out or it completely fades away. Cindy got this gecko. She knew there was something special about him. She wasn't sure if it was a new gene or if it was just a really cool animal, but she noticed that Rialto, for whatever reason, didn't matter who he was paired with, he was throwing that same type of offspring. Fast forward a couple years, she actually had to sell a lot of his offspring off to Korea, and a lot of the guys in Korea did really, really great work with them. They developed the gene very well, and she also sold some to people here in the United States. But for the most part, the bulk of the project was developed in Korea. Mumusaurus, Ryan Lee, Jet Black Geckos, Sanya Kim, these guys are all working on this gene for a couple years. They developed it and they basically started to figure out that this was a different gene. Very early on, we knew that it was most likely an incomplete dominant because of how fast it was getting passed down in the first generation. They were seeing that about half of the babies, Sables right off the bat. And when they did pair Sable to Sable, they figure out that one in four babies, an average, was coming out completely different than the rest. This is what we call a super sable. Now, the super sable looks very similar to what the super cappuccino looked, except they seem to have like a really thick stroke of white down the dorsal. And this is why a lot of people right off the bat said, this is completely different than cappuccino. And some people said, 
no, this is the exact same thing as cappuccino. It's just, you know, a combo basically, and it's bred to high cream geckos, and that's why they produce that high cream. As far as we know now, it has been known to be a separate gene, but it's an allelic gene. So what that means is that basically that gene share the same allele as cappuccinos. So it's very similar. We have seen this in the past in other in other reptiles, kind of like with ball pythons. There's the Mojave, the Butter, the Lessers. These are three separate genes, but when you breed them together, they make blue-eyed leucistic animals. But when you breed Mojave to Mojave, it makes one blue-eyed Lucy that is a little bit different than the one from Lesser to Lesser. You know, it's hard to explain, especially if you haven't had a lot of experience with, you know, reptile genetics. They share the same allele, so it's, it's, the gene is doing something very similar in both geckos. Now, this has caused a lot of controversy in the community. Some people think cap and sable are the same thing, and some people think that sable and cap are different. And we're going to look at both arguments later on in the video. But just to touch back on the original pair that produced Rialto, the original sable that we call, I truly think that Pinch, the female from that pair, was the original sable because when you look at her at her head in particular, you could see some of that white fringing. Now what happens is since the, the sable kind of mutes out the orange or the, or the yellow coloration that would normally be, be on top of the head, it basically strips that and makes it brown, but it doesn't do anything to the white coloration. It actually exaggerates the white coloration a little bit. So that's why you get some of that fringing and that head stamp on a lot of sables heads. We see that very commonly when baby sables hatch, they look like a regular gecko. They look cream on, on the dorsal and, and on the face and on the head and on the laterals. And then as it starts to age, some of that cream starts to fade and the white kind of like sticks and that's why you get the white fringing on the crest. I personally love that look. Fringing on the crest or on the pinstripes is something that has been very sought after for many, many years. It just gives the animal like a, a stunning look. But with that being said, some people do think it's the same thing as cappuccinos because cappuccinos have similar outcomes when you breed them to high cream animals. But let's look at both opposing arguments and then you can decide for yourself. So for whatever reason, cat people and sable people do not like each other. I don't know what's going on. Personally, I can't wait to work with both genes and in a bit I'm going to show you my projects for both genes. But I wanted to talk about the differences between sables and caps or maybe you think they're the same thing. Who knows? The thing that sticks out to me when I look at, you know, sables and caps is obviously that exaggeration of the white and cream pattern with the sables. Now, for whatever reason, it seems like the sables exaggerate that more than the cappuccinos. Now, cappuccinos and sables do the same thing to the orange and yellow pattern where it kind of like mutes it down a little bit. That kind of like accentuates the white pattern just naturally because the other patterns aren't there. Sable seems like it makes it spread more. Now, when we look at super sables, they're very, very different than a super cappuccino. Now, we have seen super cappuccino from many different lines, and they all pretty much look the same, which is, you know, like an all black gecko, you know, no crests, you know, the black eyes most of the time. But with the super sables, they have that, that you know, cream dorsal down the back, and it's almost never looking like a super cappuccino. So we do see the distinction between both super forms, right? Now, what happens when we breed a sable to a cappuccino? Well, what we get is what we call a luwak. A luwak is a one gene sable, one gene cappuccino, and it makes a super form. Similar to like the ball pythons, as, as I was mentioning before, where you have a butter and a Mojave will still make a blue-eyed leucistic ball python. With the luwak, the sable and the cappuccino make a similar super form to both animals. So it's not quite a super cappuccino and it's not quite a super sable. It's somewhere in between. You see that some of the, the dorsal pattern is there, but not quite as thick and pronounced as it is on the super sable. It's not completely gone like you see on the super cappuccinos. That is something that we commonly see on animals that are allelic because they're basically like compatible with each other and they will make a super form that's, you know, somewhere in between both extremities. 
it becomes really hard to argue these points because there are also a lot of other genes at play. It's not just a pure sable animal or a pure cappuccino animal. We have bred these animals for so many generations that there's white spot trait in there, there's pinstriping, there's all sorts of tigering and harlequin patterns in there mixed in. It's gonna take a little bit longer before we could say for sure that it's something completely different. Another thing that is an argument for the people that say cap and sable are the same thing is that when you breed them, for example, to a lily white, you get virtually the same animal. A sable lily and a frappuccino look almost identical. And I would challenge anybody out there to say that, you know, they could pick them apart because I personally can't. It's gonna take a lot of experimentation and a lot of lineage tracking to make sure that we have the proper testing and the proper experiment set lineage experiments that way if they are something separate you know down the line when we're selling these animals we could actually describe them correctly now another super interesting thing and maybe an argument to why sable and cap are actually different is what happens when you produce a super sable lily and a super cap lily the two animals look you know, very different and they have been consistently produced. It's not like we're talking about one or two animals that have popped out. There have been, you know, multiple animals of these produced. Super cap lily whites, they hatch out almost identical to a super cap. And over time they start to develop like white patches that kind of looks very irregular. The super sable lilies, look you know really really intriguing to me they almost look like exactly what you would picture it to be a a lily white but it's kind of like fighting with the super sable and it's you know it's like a mix of really high white harlequin markings and harlequin and dorsal and cream dorsal but it's it's like fighting in between now we have also seen a luwak lily, which is a sable cap lily. This is also different than the sa super sable lily and is different than the super cap lily. So that is why, you know, a lot of people are very confident in saying that it is a completely different thing. The luwak lilies are, <laughs> you know, somewhere in between of the two. So it's not, the white isn't as pronounced as it is with the super sable lily but it's not as muted or as irregular as it is with the super cap lilies. So who knows, you know, this is super exciting because of the, all the different combos that we could do. Another thing I did want to mention is that the super sables, for whatever reason, don't seem to have the tiny little nostrils. Now, I have seen pictures and the nostrils don't seem quite as large as regular geckos, but they're not having the pinhead nostrils that the super caps are having. Are they, you know, super healthy animals? I don't know. I've never had one in my possession, but as of now, it seems like super sables are healthier than super cappuccinos. The luwaks, however, do seem to have those tiny little nostrils. It can become an issue later down the line with your geckos. If you're not getting as much oxygen in, it's definitely going to have impacts on your development. Personally, it's not something I'm going to be breeding for. Not necessarily going to be breeding for the super sables either, but it's interesting to see that, you know, the, the little bit of a difference between both. Now, something I did want to say is that we have seen super caps that have regular nostrils and may have been breeders that have, are producing super sables that have tiny nostrils, but they haven't said it out in the public yet. That's just speculation. I don't know. So from what we have seen in the public right now, the super sables have the bigger nostrils. Now, if that was all confusing, stick around. I'm going to show you my personal sable project that I'm super stoked for. I am doing a breeding loan with a friend of mine, Lori, that let me borrow her sable male that she was lucky enough to get straight from the Rialto before this all craziness happened. I'm super stoked to pair them to two lily white females I'm about to show you and this new baby sable I just got. All right, so I was lucky enough to score a breeding loan with a sable, thanks to my friend Lori at Glamour Geckos. Definitely check them out. But I wanna show you what we're gonna be doing with the sable project. Now, right off the bat, you see two of my girls here that I'm pairing with him. This is a, a high coverage lily white female. As you can see, there's barely any base color on this animal. She is just covered in white from head to toe. And her name is Fitz Pleasure and uh, she's an awesome gecko for sure. And this is the other girl I have him paired up with. 
So just two girls, they don't wanna overwhelm them or anything. This girl is actually a daughter of Frost, one of my favorite Lily Whites ever. And you can see she's like an extreme Harlequin, high coverage Lily White. There's so much color on this, so much Lily White markings, and that's what I absolutely love. I wanna make some really high coverage Sable Lilies, and this is why I have these two girls with them. So, you know, these two girls should make some amazing babies with them. I'm super stoked. And of course, this is the man of the hour right here, right now. And this is the Sable boy that we will be pairing to these girls. Sables, they progress so incredibly. He is actually, he doesn't have as much white I have seen on some of the other Sables. I have my friend Gabby at, at Morph Menagerie has some crazy Sables and she's produced like one of the most insane Sable lilies I have ever seen that's actually owned by Ruby Reptiles now. But when it hatched out, it ba barely had you know, any white on the sides or anything. And as it got older, it just started to pop up, you know, cream started to spread even more. But this is actually like a hypo lavender base sable. And you could tell because even when he fires up, this is what he looks like most of the time. Uh, but even when he fires up, he's kind of like a light brown, nothing crazy, nothing too dark. And it's gonna be interesting to work that into all of the groups as well. Now, personally, what I want to do with the Sables is I want to put a really black base on them, but this is a start. This is definitely going to catapult our projects into a different level, especially with those two girls being Lily. And you can see he just jumped on her head. I'm really excited to produce some of these babies, and we're going to keep you guys updated with the whole process. 2024 breeding season is just starting to take place, and I'm just starting to pair all my geckos now. So I am super stoked to see what he actually produces. And I do have one baby from him already from another female that Lori has. And I want to show you that baby because that baby obviously has a lot more cream than this guy already. So I can't even imagine what it's going to look like as an adult. Another thing a lot of, I like about these sables is that fringing. So his fringing isn't as crazy, but you could see it's there and paired with the right girls. It's just going to blow everything out of the water. Let's get to see that baby. And man, I can't wait for these. Hopefully they give me eggs soon. So this is my new little sable baby. Now this is officially my first sable. It's interesting because you can see how much orange it has as a baby, but I know that, you know, as it ages, most of that's probably gonna dull out or, or just completely go away. But the cream that it has on the dorsal and on the laterals is quite like just insane. Now, something that I have noticed with the Sable Babies and the Cappuccino Babies is that they will have a little bit of that dark tip of the tail right there. Not all the Sables have it. Like you saw, our boy over there didn't have that dark tail. I think that may be because he's kind of like a hypo, but I, ha I do see that most of the, the Sables that hatch do have a little bit of that dark tail. Same with the Lilies, when you hatch like a a uh, Frappuccino or a Sable Lily, they have like a brighter white right off the bat. The cream on this is super, super interesting. You can see some of the white spots on the side, which as it grows, those white spots are gonna spread. And I can't wait to show you guys, you know, what this thing looks like in the future. If you wanna see the progression of this gecko, we're definitely gonna be doing updates on the channel on it so you can see how it progresses in real time. So make sure you subscribe. With that being said, guys, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on the next one.